and Justin here today. We are checking out Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, one of the all-time guitar great riffs. Really good fun one to play this one. We're going to be looking at the intro, the main kind of theme that you're probably here to see, but I'm also going to show you the chords and how to play the kind of the rhythm part as well, just in case you ever want to jam it so you can play the whole tune. Kind of important. So uh, let's get to a close-up. Check out how to play it. Okay, now a little bit slower. Let's look at this now one note at a time. Now uh, it's based in uh, a B flat blues. Okay, so this first note, there's your B flat chord. You should be able to see it coming out of that chord there pretty clearly. So sliding up to the seventh fret with the second finger, third string. Then first finger goes down on the sixth fret of the second string. Third finger, eighth fret on the second string. And now we use the first finger, a little bar, and we're going to slide from the fifth fret up to the 6th fret, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. Okay, so we've got a whole bar there and beat one of the next one. We're starting on the and after 3, so we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. Okay, now we've got the little finger going down in the ninth fret of the second string, third finger in the eighth fret, first finger in the sixth fret, then it rolls over, and we're playing sixth fret on the third string, second finger goes down on the seventh fret, and then the third finger is playing the root note, which is the eighth fret of the fourth string. Now I must admit, I always played it eight to six, but it is definitely on the recording twice on the 8th fret. Okay, so up to there so far we've got this. Okay, now we're going to use our second finger to reach over to play the 8th fret of the 5th string. We've got a whole bar of 8th notes just playing these two notes together. We'll slide just at the first one. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Now we've got this little interesting shift here. 1 and 2 and... Now, this note you kind of hear getting played, but I, I always think of it as 1 and 2 and... I guess technically it's 1 and 2 and... But I just... 1 and 2 and... It's kind of what I hear it as anyway, so uh, up to you whether you want to go... Hold the chord down or not. After that, that's 1 and 2 and... Now we've got 3 and 4 and... So from here... Third finger sliding to the fifth fret on the third string. Then we're going to the third fret, fifth fret. Now this last note, again, I always played it as that, but it's a little bit more muted on the record, so it's kind of not really actually that note. It's what it sounds like, but I always put that one in anyway. It doesn't really make any difference. Okay, so that next two bars after the little slides. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay, now we start the little kind of classic move here with a very fast bend. This 
So he's kind of mixing it up between this very short, sharp bend, third finger, eighth fret of the third string, making sure that you're muting it with your picking hand there, and playing this note here with the first finger, that's the sixth fret of the second string. But sometimes he's letting the first finger lie flat and you're getting the thinnest two strings. So sometimes it's this, sometimes it's this. Now I've actually bothered to notate in the songbook the exact order of those, but I don't think it really matters. So he's doing the bend, then the sixth fret, and again, next time, it's the thinnest two strings, back to one string, back to two strings, then it's three, just going to the sixth fret, and then two, with the thinnest string. Okay, it's this. Now the count of this is a lot easier to learn by listening to the recording rather than trying to count like one, two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, four. You can do it if you like, but it's really much, much better off just listening to the original recording, okay? So it's that. Now we've got this great little end run. Okay, so we're starting off with a eighth fret full tone bend with a third finger on the third string. Now we're going sixth fret of the thinnest string, ninth fret on the second string, eighth fret, sixth fret, then up to the eighth fret on the first string, sixth fret, Ninth fret on the second string, eighth fret, second fret, uh, sixth fret on the second string. Then we move over to the third string and we play eighth fret. And then we've got this little hammer on from the sixth to the seventh. I often hear that note in there as well. But you don't have to put that in. It's probably technically that, but I swear I can hear a little bit of that in there as well. Then we do a little rake. These notes. kind of strumming through it, then ninth fret, eighth fret, thinnest two strings, eighth fret on the third, uh, third string tone bend, thinnest two strings, eighth fret on the third string tone bend, thinnest two strings, then third finger goes down a little bar barring the second and third strings at the eighth fret, then first finger doing a little bar barring the sixth fret on the second and third strings, hammering the second finger down in the seventh fret and finishing on the root note. So that last part nice and slow. Okay, the count for that last part. One, two and three and four and one and two and three four and one and two and three and four and one okay let's have a look at the whole thing in super slow motion so two three and four and one and two and 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 three and four and one two and three and four one and two and three four one two and three and four, one and two and three, four, one, two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and one. So it's really 
actually great fun to learn that intro. But don't make the same mistake I see so many people make, which is not learn how to play the rest of the song. If you're going to jam it, you want to be able to rip that intro out and then tear straight into the rest of the song and maybe have a go at singing it as well, you know. So the first thing to realize, we're in B flat, okay? When I was a kid, I used to always used to play it in A because it was an easier guitar key. But uh, I think mainly because of the horn section, a lot of uh, horn players like trumpets and saxophones and stuff, are, uh, they find it easier to play in B flat than in A uh, for reasons that are too complicated to go into here. But uh, so that's why. I a lot of that sort of music from that era is in the key of B flat. So we need to use a kind of a bar chord for this kind of 12 bar shuffle pattern. So we've got our first finger down the uh, sixth fret of the thicker string and then third finger going down the eighth fret of the fifth string. But what's really important is that you're muting all of the rest of the strings with the underneath of your first finger there. So when I'm playing that chord, I'm actually being able to play all of the strings. Okay, it's really important, it's part of the style of that era. So, uh, what I'm doing is I'll be playing one and two and three and four and with all down and up strum. So, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then I'm going to put my little finger down the tenth fret of the fifth string on beats two and four only. So, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now there's something else going on which is also stylistically kind of important, that is if you want to get it, you know, like the record, uh, and that's that I'm pumping my hand. If I leave the fingers pressed down all the time, it sounds like this. And the notes are kind of sustaining a bit too long. We want... So I'm actually relaxing my fingers, press each beat. My fingers are kind of pressing down and then relaxing. It takes a little bit of practice to get that right, especially at a fast tempo when you're really going for it and it's got a lot of energy. It's a really good thing to practice, really trying to get that groove on. You know, playing along with the record is, of course, a really good way of making sure that you get into the groove properly. Um, now, uh, the three chords that we've got are B flat. E flat and F. Now uh, to get to from B flat to an E flat chord, you can either move all of the way up to the eleventh fret, which might seem a little bit weird for some of you. It did to me anyway because I was just like, well, there's B flat. If I want to go to E flat, let's move down a string. So my root note's now on the fifth string. So nothing on the thicker string. Then sixth fret and the eighth fret. Okay. Uh, however. Again, in that period, very often, they just used to move the chord shape. And it's, sometimes they'd have the bit of the chord ringing out as well, so you get this kind of... So sometimes you hear a, bit, a little bit of chord sneaking in there as well. So uh, you can feel free to try playing the E flat up there. Uh, if you're not worried about being that authentic, just move it down a string, it's a lot easier. Okay, so that would be your E flat. Back to B flat, then we're going to F. It's exactly the same as the E flat, but up two frets. So uh, not on the thicker string. Uh, and then we've got the eighth fret and the tenth fret. And we're going to be putting little finger on and off on the twelfth fret. Now, many of you that have learned a 12 bar blues will kind of recognize that the last four bars of a 12 bar blues normally go five chord, four chord, one chord, five chord. Okay, but in a, the, this particular blues, we're just going one chord, one chord, five chord, five chord. Okay, which means that we're going to go from the B flat for two bars to the F for two bars. It's a lot simpler, and it, but it's actually what works on this tune. So don't feel like you just any old standard 12 bar blues will fit over every other 12 bar blues. If you want to get into it properly, you want to realize that slightly different 12 bar patterns are the correct ones for different songs. So uh, in this example, we start off on B flat. Way down in Louisiana, close to New Orleans. Back amongst the woods, among the evergreens. E flat snug cabin made of earth and wood. The B flat with country boy, his name was Johnny B. Good. Happy never learned how to read or write so well. But he could B flat his guitar like a ring in a bell. Go, go. Okay, so that's the, 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 the chord sequence there. It's a lot less complicated than normal at the end. Just two bars of the B flat, two bars of the F chord. Now, uh, 
When we get to the chorus as well, it's an interesting thing to check out. It's the same, exactly the same chord sequence again, but one of the things Chuck Berry does that sounds really cool is in between the vocal, he does a little response. So uh, we got this. That's the first finger on the uh, ninth fret of the second string, second finger in the tenth fret of the third string, and then little finger or third finger will play the eleventh fret of the second string. Okay, that's the little riff. Oh, go. Go Johnny, go, go, 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 go. Johnny, be good. Okay, so having that little lick, which is the same every time, the very last, just moves that lick down to the fourth fret on the second string, fifth fret on the uh, third string. A little bit, it always sounds weird to me like that, but it's definitely what's on the record. Um, so you might want to experiment with doing that a little bit as well. The other lick that he often uses. Yeah, go, Danny, go, go, go. Okay, which is sixth fret bend on the third, uh, sorry, eighth fret bend on the third string, then twice uh, on the sixth fret of the second string. Then the bend again, 8th fret, 3rd string. Then the 6th fret on the 2nd string, and then the bend again. Bend, note, note, bend, note, bend. So when he's using that one, it happens again in between the vocals. So it's go, go. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Okay, so that way actually I'll put a four chord in there, which definitely didn't belong, so it should have stayed on the five chord longer. Uh, but that idea of putting a little riff in between the vocals is a really cool thing. You wouldn't normally be doing the rhythm and the, the vocal, uh, the rhythm and that little lead lick at the same time. Okay, normally you'd be doing the lead lick and singing and not trying to get that rhythm part. I was just adding it in there just as a, a demo so you can have a go at uh, you know, hearing where it fits into the rhythm. That's kind of important too. So uh, it's a really good fun tune this one. Definitely you know, a great one for jam and I played this all through my teenage years and it's really really good fun to play. And uh, if you want to have a go at the solo as well, the solo is fully tabbed out in my uh, vintage guitar book and I will do a video lesson on it at some point as well. Uh, just not yet because I have to learn it properly before I do a video and I haven't got time today, sorry. Um, but I will get on it, I promise. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.